Good morning and welcome to this celebration of life for Dick Sutherland. The family thanks you for joining them today. And I invite you to join heartily in the service. The hymns are in the red book that are in most cases uh, right behind your knees. And in the book, the page numbers that I refer to will begin on page 279 in the front of the book. And the hymns are in the back of the book. And I'll announce those when we come to them. Beginning on page 279. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We're gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Richard, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. If we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Our gathering song is hymn 619. I know that my Redeemer lives. Hymn 619. We'll sing the first four stanzas, and that's in the back of the book. Hymn 619.
Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on forevermore. Here in Psalm 121. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Richard. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. St. Paul writes, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we're children, then we're heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. For all creation waits with eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. The creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that whole, the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we await eagerly our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is not hope. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I've called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. 
I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. To say that Dick was a quiet man is an understatement. He was a man of few words, but what he said and what he did always counted for something. As an electrician, Dick knew that silence can be powerful, and it doesn't take a head of steam or a loud banging motor just that steady current that flows from the power source. The Bible describes that power source as God and love as the power itself and we as the transmission lines. As the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Now remain in my love. In his own quiet way, Dick lived out that love as a husband, father, as a grandfather, as a friend, as a Christian. And as the uniform and the flag remind us, as a Marine. In 1955, Dick enlisted in the Marine Corps. This was just two years after the armistice in Korea, a very costly war in human life, especially for Marines. So when Dick put on the uniform with the eagle globe and anchor, he knew full well what he was signing up for. And Jesus' words in today's gospel say it all. Greater love has no man than he lay down his life for his friends. Some men, some men lay down their lives on the battlefield, but most give lives of quiet service. That was Dick. I first got to know him well through the Buildings and Grounds Committee here at the church. He was our resident electrician. And in fact, several years ago when part of the power went out on the campus and we couldn't figure out what was going on because some lights worked and some didn't and some outlets worked and some didn't, before the electrical company figured out what was wrong, Dick had already diagnosed the problem. And he said to me, and it was all Greek to me, he said, well, pa Pastor, it's just we have three-phase power, and one of the three phases has gone out. And that's exactly what it turned out to be. Dick was always willing to help. Dick was always willing to love. And the greatest love in his life was UD. For 61 years, you and Dick made a dynamic duo. Your family grew with the addition of Steve and Chris. And then the proud parents became proud grandparents when Colin was born. The other day, Dee showed me one of the last photos taken of, of Dick. Dick and Dee were, sta were proudly standing with their grandson, Colin, and their adopted grandchild, Riley, who were in their graduation gowns. And you could see the pride in their faces. Greater love has no one than this. Of course, that verse from the Bible isn't just about our love for others. It's first and foremost about God's love for us. That is the greatest love. That Jesus would lay down his life for us and that through his death, we would have life. 
I'm the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. That's why we can celebrate Dick's life today. Celebrate the life that he lived, the love that he gave, but also celebrate the life he now lives in, with, and through God. A life where there is no more pain or suffering or sickness where he can be at peace. One of the first things that Marines learn is how to stand duty. And in conjunction with that, they learn to memorize the 11 general orders of a century. The things they need to know in order to assume the watch. The first and most important general order is to take charge of your post. Dick did that throughout life. Not in a flashy way, not in a loud way, but in a humble, honest, sincere devotion to duty. He did it day in and day out, and he faithfully served God country, and family. One of the other 11 general orders is that you don't quit your post until you've been properly relieved. Shipmate, you stand relieved. We have the watch. Rest in peace. Amen. I invite you to join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 282 in the front of your hymnal. Page 282. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. I'm going to read a series of petitions, and each ends with the words, God of mercy, and I invite you to respond hear our prayer. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you've knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who've been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share new life in Christ. God of mercy, give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world groans in grief and pain, 
your spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy. Help us in the midst of things we can't understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all who believe. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Richard to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Richard. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you as sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, 
and into the glorious company of all your saints in light. Amen. Our sending song is hymn number 597, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, hymn 597. We're going to go to the columbarium for the interment. You're welcome to join the family there. The interment takes about five to 10 minutes. It will be outdoors, somewhat shaded. So if heat is an issue, um, you may choose not to go over there. There is some seating. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs>